Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian District Mathematical Olympiad for 12th graders 2014 problem number 3. Let A be a unital ring satisfying A plus A squared plus A cubed equals A to the 4th plus A to the 5th plus A to the 6th power for all elements A of our ring. We wish to prove that for every element of this ring A. If A raised to some power n for some positive integer n equals 0, then a itself must be 0. And moreover, we wish to show that a to the fourth power equals just a for every element of this ring. So it's a nice problem. Here are my, here are my hints. First, part a is very easy. Suffice to show the following fact that uh, for every natural number n, greater than or equal to, if a to the power of n is 0, then a to the power n minus 1 is also 0. And after showing that, take our equation, which we assume to be true, and multiply on both sides by a to the power n minus 2. And for the part b, first set a equals minus 1 in our equation to get this curious property that in our ring, 1 plus 1 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 0, yes. The neutral element of multiplication added together with itself gives us the neutral element of addition in this ring. By the way, I assume that you know what uh, a ring is. Basically, a ring is has two operations, multiplication and addition. It should form a Belian group with respect to addition and with respect to multiplication well, multiplication should be associative, it should have neutral element 1, because we are talking about unital rings, and also distributive law should be true. So, for example, distributed law says that a times b plus c can be distributed to get a b plus a c, for example. Uh, but uh, the multiplication need not be commutative, but it doesn't matter in this problem. So show that 1 plus 1 is 0, and then multiply our equation on both sides by a, to show that a to the power of 7 equals this, and in fact equals a. Uh, and then show that a to the 8th power plus a squared is 0, and consider this expression, a to the 4th power minus a squared. To give this problem a try, and use part a. To give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. All right. So as I suggested, uh, for the part A, we will show we will show that for every element of our ring, if uh, and for every and for every uh, n greater than or equal to, if a to the power of n is 0, then a to the power n minus 1 is also 0. How can we prove it? Well, so suppose, suppose that a to the power of n equals 0. By assumption, we have this. It's our assumption that this equality is true. And I will take and multiply on both sides, on both sides by n a to the power n minus 2. Yes, I can obviously do it because n is greater than or equal to 2, so I am either multiplying by 1 or by a to some positive power. There would be a problem for negative powers because our operation need not have inverse of itself. But here we are taking non-negative powers. And now, using distributive law, here we have a to the power n minus 1 plus a to the power of n plus a to the power n plus 1 equals n to the power n plus 2, a to the power n plus 3, a to the power n plus 4. Or maybe I will write it in a more suggestive way. It's a times a to the power of n 
and here is a squared times a to the power of n, a cubed times a to the power of n, and a to the fourth power times a to the power of n. And now take a look. a to the power of n is, a, is assumed to be zero. So here we have zero, 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 zero. Uh, so, and zero times anything in any ring is zero. So a to the power n minus one equals zero, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And how, and now that closes part a because since a to the power of n is one, is zero rather, is zero, we have step by step a to the power n minus one is zero, n to the power n minus two is zero, and so on and so on. Inter iterating will finally get that a is zero, which closes the proof of, of part a. Now, for the part b, for the part b, what we wish to show is that a to the power r equals a for every element. First, what I will do is set a to be minus one in equation in our assumption, basically. Then, then we have the following. We have minus one plus minus one squared plus minus one cubed equals minus one to the fourth power, minus one to the fifth power, minus one to the sixth power. And now we have minus one plus one minus one equals one minus one plus one. And since, since we are dealing with addition, we can take, uh, we know that addition is commutative in any ring. It has inverse opposite element. So we can cancel this minus one, for example, with this minus one, this plus one, this, with this, this plus one, and we have this curious property that minus one equals one in this ring. So zero equals one plus one. And let's remember that because it's very important. Zero equals one plus one. All right. And now we will use once again our assumption, this time for any element of our ring. Because this is true. And since this is true, I can multiply on both sides by A. And now I know that this is true. A squared plus A to the third power plus A to the fourth power equals A to the fifth to the sixth to the seventh. So this is true, and one, but also our original equation is also true for every element. And now what I will do, I will subtract these two equations together. I will subtract one from another. Subtracting. Subtracting. And we will have what we will have. We'll have a to the fourth power minus a equals a to the seventh power minus a to the fourth power. <clears throat> but now notice that I can take the following a to the fourth plus a to the fourth, uh, a to the fourth plus a to the fourth minus a minus a equals a to the seventh power minus a. Perfect, but now let's take a look. From these two terms, I can factor out a to the fourth power. From these two terms, I can factor out minus a. And there is, there is a to the seventh power minus seven. And now, by our fact that zero equals one plus one, this is zero, this is zero, so the entire left hand side is zero. And we can put a on the other side, and we have a to the seventh power equals a. And now I will take this equality and I will multiply on both sides by a. So I have this 
which means that a to the a to the eighth power equals a a squared. All right. And now we will consider we will consider a to the fourth power minus a squared. What is it? Well, let's take a look. a to the fourth power minus a squared is the same as a to the fourth minus a, a to the fourth minus a, and using normal uh, multiplication term by term, it's a to the eighth power minus a to the fifth minus a to the fifth plus a squared. And now let's take a look. A to the eighth power, this term, this term right here can be replaced by a squared. So we have a squared plus a squared minus a to the fifth minus a to the fifth. So what is it? Well, once again, we can factor out a squared, a squared, and we will have one plus one minus a to the fifth power one plus one. Again, in our ring, one plus one is zero. This is zero, this is zero. So we have just zero. And now it's time to use part A because we have demonstrated that something squared equals zero by part A. Since a to the fourth power minus a squared is zero, it must be the case it must be the case that a to the fourth power minus a is zero, so a to the fourth power equals a. And that closes our proof because it's exactly what we wanted to demonstrate. A very nice problem I'd say from ring theory from abstract algebra. So yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time and I will see you next time. Goodbye.